What's going on guys and welcome to Intake Your Nation where we game and we know things and today I want to talk about Kagero's latest new tool in their kit with the Novell engine and Novell Vague the grade 4 that can single handedly blow up the opponent's field and trigger deny them. But before we begin please hit that like button if you like this video, smash that subscribe button and click the bell so that you can be notified each and every time that I upload a brand new video. Hey guys, one big announcement I want to make is that I am doing a giveaway of the all new Card Fight Vanguard Overdress Trial Decks. I will be giving away a bundle of all five trial decks to two lucky winners and to the grand prize winner, a booster box. All you need to do to enter is to be a sub to the channel. All right, guys, <laughs> this is going to be my second attempt at actually doing this uh, deck profile as the first time the audio didn't pick up. <laughs> so that feels kind of bad. But um, anyway, this is going to be Novell, the Novell engine, the grade four engine that we were um, all hyped about going into set 13. Now, if you're new to Vanguard, you've never seen Kagero, you've never seen grade fours and all the other things before. We're going to start this thing very simple and try to explain very thoroughly why I play the cards that I play and why they do what they do. So first off, we are gonna start with Lizard Soldier, uh, Soldier Conro. Um, Conro is a CB1 and retire this unit to add a grade one or less card from your deck to your hand. That is one of the most perfect starters Kagero has. It is really hard to come off of Kagero or Conro. There are so many other um, starters you could use, but none as effective and efficient as Conro because you want your PGs, which if you're new to Vanguard, uh, your PGs are basically what you live and die by because if you do not have a PG and they take you to six damage, you die, or they try to take you to six damage, you die. Uh, these things keep you from dying. These in your grade twos keep you from dying, but the ability to be able to just snatch this out of the deck for one counter blast is very powerful and it thins your deck and it gives you a little bit of a slighter chance to be able to actually hit a trigger because you've thinned the deck out just ever so slightly. We are running nine draws um, because this deck almost feels like a Yu-Gi-Oh deck. So if you're familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh and you're familiar with Exodia, it almost feels a bit like that because you're trying to assemble pieces. You're trying to get the pieces to the puzzle in order to do the things that you want to do. And I'm going to explain that. Uh, we are running four heals because we do like to stay alive. We like being able to stay in the game and uh, try to win. So there is that. Um, first off, we are running four copies of Novell Roman Dragon, one uh, grade one 7k uh, attacker. So Vanguard, Rearguard, when placed, if your Vanguard is a grade two or less, you may return a Novell Vague, aka a grade four, from your hand to your deck to add a grade three from your deck to your hand. So therefore you see a little bit of filtering and you see some uh, deck manipulation. The fact that this allows us to take what is our heal trigger, Novell, which is the card that the deck is built around, put her back into the deck and search any of our other grade threes. Now this does multiple things. One thing this, you know, gives you that pesky heal that came to your hand that you're like, oh God, I don't really want to draw that. I need that in the deck so that I can hit it hopefully and kind of live longer. Um, unless you put that card back into the deck. And it lets you search out any grade three, any of your grade threes, and add that one card to your hand. And in this case, we'll talk about it later, it's going to be Dragonic Overlord, the end. Now, next up for our grade ones, we are still running two copies of Seal Dragon Kershi. You could actually swap this out for Gojo, whereas Gojo is a rear guard or vanguard ability. You may rest the unit, discard a card, um, and draw a card. Whereas Kershi is a little bit more stipulative in the fact that she's just like, when placed, if your opponent has grade two units, you may discard a card from your hand if you do draw a card. So there are stipulations that surround Kershi that are not as forgiving as Gojo, but I kind of like Kershi for what it does. It still allows you to get rid of something that you don't want to try and draw into something that you do want. Um, we are running three copies of Embodiment of Armor Bar. He is our 8K Vanilla. Vanilla Ming, he has no ability. He is just playing. He's just an 8K beat stick. He feels good on turn one if you have to ride him. So that like when they're actually attacking you on those defensive turns, you can actually hit numbers that they can't reach. Therefore, kind of preventing you from taking more damage than what is necessary. He's also a very great booster in this sense. Going into our grade twos, we are playing four copies of Novell Critic Dragon 9K grade two. Says Vanguard or Rearguard when placed if um, Novell Vague aka the grade four is in your hand or on the Vanguard circle, you may CB1 to retire an opponent's unit. Now, keep in mind, that is a buff. That is a buff compared to what Berserk Dragon does. So, as long as you actually have the grade four, so long as you actually have the grade four, 
it is a buff and it's really strong in the fact that for one counter blast you can pop something get rid of it and go on about your merry way um and certain situations depend on certain matchups like if you're playing against novas you can kill some of their back row beast deity units or if you're playing link joker you can kill their lanthanums or in later you know matchups maybe palladiums and things like that so like I like it in the versatility of the fact that when it goes off, you can you can do one or two things, okay? You can pretty much kill a column with one card because you pop the back and then you swing at the front. Or you pop a grade two and then you swing at the grade two and therefore you're killing two units. Either way, as long as the thing goes off, it's killing two units and it just depends on the matchup. It depends on the matchup and it depends on where you're at in the game and how you play it. And the card can be very versatile and it does what it does very beautifully. Um, next up is going to be our four copies of prowling dragon striking so it's a 10k grade 2 that says on vanguard it has restraint meaning it cannot attack however when your grade 3 rides upon this unit it gets plus 5k and a crit so whereas that turn 2 you don't get to attack you're missing out on that damage turn 3 when you do go into your grade 3 you make up for it by being able to gain a crit and get more damage in and you're giving the power bonus to your vanguard and we'll talk more about that. Now, he is also a strong grade 2 on the rear guard. He's 10k, so he kills all the 9ks. And there's a plethora of them in the game right now. And he kills other 10k, so he's very, very strong. We are running four copies of Bellicosity Dragon because this says on Vanguard or Rear Guard when this unit attack hits a Vanguard, you may counter charge, meaning you unflip the damage that you use to pay the cost of, like, per se, Conroe's ability. So what I like to do, and this combo works about 95% of the time, 90 to 95% of the time the combo goes off where on turn two, I ride into striking. Okay, I sit on striking. I activate Conroe's skill. I retire him, CB1 retire him to get the PG. And then I draw Bellicosti on the rear guard. I smack their vanguard and I get the damage unflipped. So therefore I got my PG for free. And then I set myself up for future plays because on turn three, I'm gaining power, I'm gaining a crit. And then somewhere down the line, if I need to, I've got my PG in hand, and my PG is gonna save me. So that turn two feels really solid when you can actually get that ability off and you get that combo off. And then like, while it may seem simple and it's not some big unga bunga move, it's it's just very effective and very efficient for what it does and for what the deck wants you to do i have also teched in one berserk dragon so is a 9k grade 2 that says vanguard rearguard when place you may cb2 to retire one of your opponents grade 2 or less rearguard so therefore you see it's not as good as the novel grade 2 prior you know saying that the grade 2 can actually do what it does um, because it is a CB2 and it has the stipulations of that it has to be grade 2 or less and that's unfortunate But berserk just still does what berserk does basically you're in that situation They got two grade twos on board. You need to get rid of them berserk comes in like a champ He's like pop and then I swing and I kill that and I kill two units for one one card that feels good It's a two for one I'm always a fan of this card with blaster blade blaster darks, you know things like that anything that can pop interceptors and just kind of like get you a little bit of advantage I like that it allows you to plus um, next up, we are running for our main grade three of choice is going to be Dragonica Overlord, the end. So why do we run this? Cross ride, meaning when it's cross ridden over, you ride it on top of Dragonica Overlord. He gets a plus 2k bonus, becoming a 13k beat stick. Vanguard ability. When this unit attack hits, you may counter blast two and persona blast to stand this and draw two cards. This is very versatile in the fact it doesn't have to hit the Vanguard initially. So on Magic Christmas Land, Maybe you've gotten their rear guards gone. Maybe they have no rear guards and you're able to go face. So like you ride this on striking. Maybe you got two counter blasts. Maybe you got a copy. You swing with a crit and power. You hit their face. All of a sudden you ditch a card. You know, you ditch the persona blast. You CB2, you stand up, you drew two cards, and then you get to swing again for a crit. There's been plenty of times this card can take the opponent from two to five or two to six. It all depends on the matchup and how the how the flow of the match is going. And your situation dragonic overlord the end is very strong he will always be strong and he does what he does and that he nets you advantage he gets swings in and he's just a beast of a card we do run four copies of the original dragonic overlord so vanguard rear guard you can counter blast three to get power plus five thousand drive check minus two and when this unit attack hits a rear guard you may stand it so basically he clears the entire board and he is still very strong in 2021. He may be an oldie but goldie, but he is a very powerful card. More times than not, you do not want him on the Vanguard. If it happens and you have to do that, then that's fine. You do it. You ride him because you have to due to circumstance. But if you can help it, you want him on the rear guard because then you power him up. He becomes a 16k beat stick that goes tink, tink. And then I'm still standing with hopefully a booster behind him, which means he's going to be swinging for 23 to 24k, depending on what booster is behind him. 
and then you're you've cleared the way to be able to hit their vanguard you've cleared the way to be able to hit them three different times with this one unit and it's just very 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 strong and i, I it's just solely I, I recommend this to use it please because it's so good um my tech end of choice for the grade threes is going to be blast bolt dragon and you might be like, why well, Blast Bulk Dragon? So let's look at it, guys. He is a 11k, limit break 4. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, you may counter blast 1 and discard a card to get plus 5k and a crit till in the turn. And during your turn, if this unit's crit is 2 or more, it gets plus 5k. Let's think about this for a second. Okay, turn 3, I ride into Blast Bulk. Let's just say I didn't get my dote. Let's just say other things didn't happen. And I go into Blast Bulk. All of a sudden, Blast Bulk's other ability is going to kick in because this thing's going to give him plus 5k and a crit. Okay, his last line of text during a turn, if this unit's crit is two or more, gets plus 5k. All of a sudden, turn three, on ride, he is a 21k2 crit vanguard that is swinging. That, that's pretty damn powerful. And then, you know, other case scenario, let's just say, you know, you are a limit break. I mean, he's still going to be 21k and a crit later on, all for the cost of one counter blast and a uh, discard. That is cheap. That is super, super cheap in a deck that likes to filter and a deck that has nothing but draw triggers in it. It should not be a pain to actually activate this cost to get that crit going live and be able to threaten them. And I'm a huge fan of threat. Next up is going to be the the whole reason of this deck. What this whole deck is built around. It's going to be Transcendence Dragon Dragonic Novel Vague. She is a 13k beat stick. The only grade 4 Kagero unit in the game. And she has the awesome ability of Soul Blast 3, Counter Blast 3, and Persona Blast. Persona Blast meaning I ditch a copy from my hand to retire all of my opponent's units on the rear guard circle. So basically, she is a board wipe. She wipes everything off the field. But the other reason why you really want to be playing this card is during your turn, if you or your opponent has 5 damage, all of your opponent's trigger effects are nullified. So if you get lucky and you're on that that one turn where you you just ride into her and you can actually get that attack in and they don't have a PG, it's um it's just a GG at that point because she doesn't care if you hit a heal trigger. She denies them the heal trigger provided that one of the other stipulations is met. Either you or your opponent has five damage. She just shuts down triggers and that's really really strong. More times than not though, I'm not gonna lie, you're not gonna activate her first ability of the Soul Blast three, Counter Blast three, and Persona Blast. You've got too many other resources going on in the match that that is just a very high, high cost. It is just so costly that most times than not, you're not going to activate this. Not that the Soul Blast is a, pain, uh, is a pain to activate. It's the CB. And if I did have another copy of her, she was your heal trigger. Like, it just feels bad. It just feels bad in the fact that you can't actually activate that skill as much as you would like. Now, overall, it's a very powerful deck when it goes off. But I like to play Devil's Advocate. I like to be fair, give the pros and cons of every deck. And I'm going to say that the deck can brick and it can brick hard because those times when you're trying to go and you're activating, maybe you don't have the grade three that you need and you don't even have the grade four. This thing's a 7K vanilla. That's all that it is. It does nothing without the grade four. It does nothing. And that feels bad. I mean, it's, it's okay. It's a 7K you know booster that's fine and maybe it's a 7k grade one vanguard you have to ride that's fine but other than that if you don't have the novel it just it bricks it feels worthless it just doesn't do anything for you and unfortunately novel critic is just as bad in the fact that if you don't have novel on the vanguard or you don't have it in your hand it can't do anything it is a 9k vanilla grade 2 that does nothing other than be a meat shield at that point and that feels really bad, but that's just the that's the nature of the beast when it comes to this deck is that it is um I don't want to say it's high rolly. I don't want to say it's high rolly, but it's built around so many situations of needing certain things and needing certain pieces to go off that it just feels really bad. And you might say, well, you know, Ant, it only really needs the heal trigger to go off. Yeah, but I'm telling you, there have been plenty of matches where I don't see the heal trigger. And none of this stuff can do anything. Whereas there would have been times like if I wasn't playing this version of the deck and this was another Berserk Dragon, I might be able to go ahead and pop something and get in some extra attacks. Or I might be able to get rid of something pesky that I don't want them to have. But I can't because I'm playing this and I'm in the hopes that I actually have this in hand or it's on my Vanguard and I can do other things. I don't know how I feel about it. So if you're going to ask me my opinion... Do not live or die by this deck recipe, because there probably are far better recipes out there, but I'm giving you my my take on the deck as of right now. But if you want my honest opinion, and I am actually tinkering with another version of the deck, where I run the Dote engine. I run nothing but the Dote engine, and I still use Novell, but I put Novell as my heal trigger, and it's the only Novell unit I use. I do not use the grade one, I do not use the grade two. At all. Period. Because 
it, it just everything else feels like it can brick. It just feels and and the chances of bricking and getting and putting you in a bad spot. When you build a deck, you want to think about the pros and the cons, and you want to think about your win con and what your lose con is. And if you're win, if you're loss, your your losing conditions are worse and outweigh your win conditions, and it's not worth using. It's just not worth using. And so, in my opinion, I don't think the Novell engine is good in this game. I don't think it's good in this version of Vanguard. I don't think it's as good as what it was back in the day of regular Vanguard, um, due to many, 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 many reasons. So I leave it up to you guys, the viewers, the players, how you want to build this deck, how do you want to play it. Um, I do recommend if you're a Kagura fan, if you like dragons, build it. Have fun with it. Maybe you can do something with it that I'm not doing. Maybe you might be able to unlock some secret to it that I'm not unlocking, and that's totally fine. That is totally fine, but I do want to give you the option that, that there are different iterations of this deck that you can use. You can even go a Novell Dauntless deck. You can go Dote Novell without worrying about the Novell engine, or you can play it the way that I've got it now and maybe change up the grade one lineup, maybe change the grade two lineup. I don't know, whatever fits your play style. But if you would, please drop your comments in the uh, description down below and let me know like what kind of success you are having with this deck. Let me know what you think about it. And um, I'll be interested to hear from you guys. And in the meantime, guys, please let me know what um, you're looking forward to going into the next set and set 14 for April, where we're actually going to see Chaos Breaker Dragon. We're going to see Die Kaiser. We're going to see the return of Blouse. We're going to be seeing new Angel Feather and Aqua Force support. So I'm really excited for that. Um, so yeah, let me know what your comments and your thoughts are on all of that, guys. And as always, please stay strong, stay healthy, and happy gaming.